Hi everybody, I'm Danny. To my left is Amit from Microsoft for Startups. With us today are Asaf and Orm, founders of uh, Oath Horizon. And today we're going to talk about Opal, an open source project they're leading in the super hot space of authorization. Oh, what can you tell us about Opal? First of all, it's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. Sure. And to your question, Opal, or Open Policy Administration Layer, is an open source project that adds real-time updates to your application's authorization layer. If you're building access control or authorization, you should really take a look at Opal. What is authorization and why do you need it? Terrific question. So authorization is part of the IAM space, or Identity Access Management. Uh, that space is comprised of identity management, authentication, and finally, authorization. While identity management and authentication already have built-in solutions like uh, Azure Active Directory and Auth0, authorization doesn't have anything. Developers are really building it on their own. On top of that, I think, we, before we continue, it's really important to differentiate between authentication and authorization. While authentication is identifying who's at the door and deciding if you're letting them in into your house, authorization is, once they're in your house, deciding what they're allowed to do. Are they allowed to sleep in your bed, eat at your kitchen, etc., etc. Developers have been building authorization for quite a while now. What has changed? That's also a good question. So basically everything has changed, the entire ecosystem. In the past, we were building just simple applications. And for those simple applications, the access layer was rather simple. Um, but nowadays, we're building huge applications in the cloud, scaled out uh, with many microservices, components at the edge. And as a result of that, the application itself is more complex, and managing access to it is more complex. And so developers trying to manage authorization for their applications are facing a lot more difficulties. From the quick survey we did, most companies end up refactoring their authorization almost every half year which is insane when you think about it. Asaf, I described a lot of changes in this domain. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you offer to developers? We offer developers, they use uh, a concept of uh, decoupling policy from code, open policy. What it means is that they write their application code separately from their authorization logic. That way, your application can ev evolve separately from your applications. For example, if your product teams want you to develop some impersonation feature, audit feature, it can uh, evolve separately from the application. It does not block the application. Uh, a good place to start with that is OPA. Uh, OPA is a general purpose policy engine uh, that was built ma mainly and firstly for Kubernetes, but is now used in more and more architectures for applications. OPA describes policy in two ways. First, as code in a language called Rego, which is a custom-made DSL. Uh, and also the policy data that supports decisions of the policy in JSON. So for example, policy code can be an RBAC policy, role-based access control, where a user must have a role that enables him to do some action. Um, and the data can be the list of roles you have in your application, for example, admin, viewer, whatever, what permissions each role has. Um, the problem with OPA is that OPA was not built for real-time cases. OPA was built mainly for Kubernetes, so it is expected that you push updates as part of your CI-CD pipeline. Uh, but it's not, it's not good enough for applications because, for example, if I invite you to a document in Google Drive, I expect you to have uh, access immediately and not uh, wait for the next deployment of the application. Um, the other problem is that OPA does not aggregate state for you. So, for example, if you need multiple sources of data uh, for your policy, uh, you cannot uh, do it, uh, you have to do it by yourself, and OPA does not help you with that. For example, if you want to aggregate billing data uh, from Stripe, you want to enable users, uh, only paying users to access some feature, um, you have to push this data from Stripe into OPA. So you can do it with Opal, much easier than you can do it yourself. How can developers use open, uh, open policy to satisfy their application needs? Uh, sure. So um, basically what we offer is that they use uh, OPA as a policy engine and OPAL to manage uh, their OPAL, OPA agents, basically. So the way OPAL works is as a client-server application. You deploy an OPAL client next to each OPA agent as a sidecar. That way OPAL client is feeding to the OPA agent all the state 
all the policy updates, all the data that it needs. The way Opal is built is it's very, very efficient. So uh, for example, it does not touch uh, the uh, main authorization uh, um, channel between the application and Opal. Okay, so uh, it only brings updates uh, in a separate channel. Um, so Opal is very efficient, it does not change. Um, the other way it works, the Opal client only subscribes to specific data that it needs. So if you, edge, if you have a huge data set um, of, of data that you need to support your uh, authorization logic, um, Opal client can only subscribe to stuff that you need for that specific agent. It's very easy to manage it that way. Um, the other way that it helps you is uh, that it can aggregate um, stuff from uh, other services and it's extensible, so you can um, write any um, provider that you want, for example, for a DB, for a special purpose API, for, let's say, for Salesforce. Um, and because it's a community project, somebody else will probably write um, providers it's for, you. It it's, for you. It's already written for you. It's already for you, yeah. So uh, it's very easy that way. Um, and Oppo is just uh, built for cloud-native applications. It's stateless. You can just deploy it as part of your Kubernetes. And um, very easy to use. Can you give us an example of what an application powered by Opal would look like? Sure, definitely. So uh, let's take a look here. We have a to-do application powered by Opal and Opal. So uh, for example, I can add tasks um, and uh, I can delete tasks. Right now, I'm the admin of this list, so I can do everything. Let's say I want to uh, deny admins the ability to delete tasks. So I go to our uh, management layer in Authorizen. Um, and I just remove the, the permission and I save the changes. And now it pushes them via Opal in real time. And now I try to delete the task and the API throws 403 forbidden because now Opa, which has updated state, does not have the permission in its, uh, in, in its data cache, basically. Yeah. So where can I get it and does it work natively on Azure? So yes, it does. It works on Azure. It also works on other cloud, like AWS and GCP. Uh, but it works on Azure natively. We provide Opal both as a CLI instrument and as pre-made Docker images that you can load directly into your cloud. And it's really made for uh, applications at scale, Kubernetes, uh, serverless, whatever you want. And you can get the code now on GitHub, which is also a Microsoft product, and uh, on opal.ac, which is uh, our open source uh, website. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for uh, coming. Thank this you for having us. Thank you. Sure. This is a wonderful tool. Good luck.